today we will delve into the fascinating areas of mastering accreditation and total uh, co total quality management. Uh, we are fortunate to have experts who will share their valuable insights with us. I cordially invite uh, Ms. Nikuni Danutara to moderate the session. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the session on mastering accreditation and total quality management. I'm pleased to introduce our distinguished speaker, Dr. Niraj Jan. Hope I pronounce it correctly. Dr. Jan is a distinguished senior pathologist and president of college director at MELAP, with extensive experience running as an MABL applicator laboratory in West Europe. He's a, he's a graduate and postgraduate from the University College of Medical Sciences, JLA. And Dr. Jane has made significant contributions to the field of pathology. As secretary of the Association of uh, Practicing Pathologists, he plays a pivotal role in sharpening the standards of practicing pathology across India. Dr. Jane is a leading faculty member, having contributed over 400 training programs nationwide. Dr. Jane is also a member of the Governing Council of Association of Indian Laboratories and frequently serves as a guest faculty at various national conferences. His expertise is further recognized through his roles in NABL and NABL practices with specialized training in ISO 15189, ISO 17043, and ISO 13528. He holds a brain belt in Six Sigma and the lead concepts from the Indian Statistical Institute. Throughout his career, Dr. Jane has been honored with numerous awards, including IMA Award of Merit for his distinguished service in lab quality education, the IMA National Award in 2014, and the DMA President Award in 2014 and 2017. His research in hematology have been recognized with that award at CMCC, sorry, CMC Fellow, and his institution was named Best Institution for Health Education and Training by 10MT India Healthcare in 2020. In 2021, Dr. Jane received the IGHM Custodian of Humanity Award for the solidifying his legacy in the field of pathology. Dr. Jane will discuss it today on mastering accreditation and total quality management strategies, roles of laboratory managers, quality managers, technical managers, and approvals in modern medical laboratories. Dr. Jain, the audience is yours. Thank you, Nipuni, and all the organizers of this conference for inviting me in this prestigious forum. I'm really very happy to interact with all of you. So, how we will proceed now? Will you be asking some questions or? Uh, Sir, I if you have. Now, to, will you be asking some questions? Uh, I think after the lecture, uh, the audience will be asking questions. Achha. What? Uh, they told me, Pearl, they said ki questions will be asked uh, from you okay. and you have to answer those questions. Okay. Uh, hmm. In that way, we can proceed. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I would like to go for the first from, uh, question for you. Uh, Given your extensive experience, how do you see the role of laboratory managers evolving the context of accreditation and total quality management? See, what we generally think, laboratory manager, it has very important role in the planning of the laboratory activities and various other activities related to administration of the laboratory. But in addition to this, what is the ultimate goal? We want to release an error-free report. And to release an error-free report, we shall have a quality management system. If that quality management system is based on some international reference, like for medical laboratory, we have ISO 15189, then results from one laboratory are more acceptable in other laboratory 
maybe in different city, maybe in different country, maybe in different continent. So for that, this laboratory managers, they have very important role. And how to implement, they have to design quality management system. To design the quality management system, they have to train their people so that people, they understand the requirement of this international standard ISO 15189. Then they develop various procedures. They develop a system how they will maintain different records. When everything is well documented, chances of errors are less. And whenever they find some time to audit, the laboratory is not implementing in a required manner at some places, or that procedure itself has some deficiency, so they can always rectify that, they can always correct, and whatever the challenges they are facing, they take appropriate action on that, and they bring this to the notice of management of the organization also. So in the end, after some time, we find that day when we started all these things and where we stand now, we have improved significantly. Our reports are more acceptable to clinicians. Our reports are most more acceptable to patients also. And in market also, we stand with a reputation. Thank you. That sounds very informative, sir. And what are the key challenges that quality managers face in maintaining application standards and uh, how they overcome those obstacles? Hmm. One of the key challenges, a laboratory is providing service, services to their patients. They are providing services to their users and everything is going smoothly. At one time of, at one point of time, now laboratory think we should go for accreditation. For some reason, maybe some regulatory requirement, maybe they want to be associated in some research projects or with some industries. So it is a requirement. And at present, suppose they have 50 personnel working in their organization. To develop this system, they need some more persons. Hiring more person, more finance is involved, so they have to get the approval of the budget. This is one of the challenge. And they have to conduct training of their people. They have to make them understand this is important. This knowledge is very important for us. First thing is arranging training. Another thing is motivating people to get this training. All these things are big challenges. And not only understanding of 15189, then there are various CLSI documents. In this, certain things are given in detail. Now, chapters on quality management are there in many textbooks also. So they have to read those also. It is a complete science. It is a complete subject. So they have to develop understanding. So these are the challenges. They have to keep, keep these people, uh, their laboratory people motivated. And when because this can be developed only as a team, when everybody is working as a team, only then we can get the result as a team in the preparation of the document and in the implementation of the document. Thank you. Uh, there are so many things to learn, so many things to learn from that. So I think we have uh, so many laboratory managers and quality managers joining with us, right? So they may also have thousands of uh, questions to ask from you. So I would like to uh, give the chance to the audience to write some questions for Right. It's your time. So, will they write in the chat box? Sorry, sir. Uh, how do you uh, how uh, the uh, participant will ask question? Will they write the questions in the chat box, or you will ask? Uh, I'm asking. I'm asking. Do you have any uh, questions in the chat box? Okay. Acha, I am not finding any question in the chat box. 
yeah, I also found the same question with checkbox. So we can proceed with the next question. How can technical managers effectively contribute to the good quality management system in medical laboratory? I would like to hear from you. Right. The, these technical managers, they are more concentrated towards the technical aspects. So when we want to develop quality management, what we expect from them, whatever instruments they are selecting, they are checking specifications of the machine very carefully. When they are inviting tender, first they are designing their performance specifications, what they are expecting from the company people and whatever company people's company people they are offering to the laboratory, they see it is meeting their requirement. And when they select a particular equipment, after that, they are verifying. They verify whatever equipment they have purchased. That particular machine is fulfilling all those performance specifications. So this part is very important. Whatever method they are selecting, that is validated method. Well accepted method for that purpose. Well documented in the textbook journals so that there is no doubt and they verify in their laboratory it is meeting all the requirements they are very careful about the maintenance of the machine suggested by the manufacturer certain things weekly maintenance certain thing daily maintenance monthly maintenance periodically company people are also coming uh, for to check certain things they are participating in iqc they are internal quality control. They are participating in external quality assurance. And if they have more than one machine, they have system for inter-equipment comparison also. So that results generated on two machines or three machines, whatever number they have, results are similar. So that way they are developing quality control in their laboratory. They are more sure about the performance of a particular method for a particular test. So this is what we expect from the technical managers. Thank you. But what do you consider the most critical factors that we are looking for during the application process of the medical? See, when assessors are going, what is their job? their role in a medical laboratory. They are representing an accreditation body which is providing accreditation to a particular laboratory. They check compliance to this international standard, ISO 15189. These days, internationally, we are talking about our approach should be process-based and risk-based. Process means sequence of activity. In our pre-examination, sequences, we are receiving requests, then we are registering patients, then we are collecting samples, then samples are transported, samples are received in the laboratory, and then transported to the examination area. This is the sequence of event which every laboratory is following. What we need for every activity, this type of sequence of event, and detailed information and procedure at each step so that chances of errors are less. Everyone is following that process and procedure and we are maintaining records. Now, risk means possibility of some harm. Nothing has happened, but there is, they have to identify the way we are carrying out a particular activity or assessor is checking the way a laboratory is carrying out a particular activity. Is there possibility of some harm? Is there any risk in that activity? So they check the processes, whatever process the standard is recommending. They have developed all the process. They have detailed information and procedure. They are maintaining records and their approach is risk-based. They are checking if no error, possibility of errors are minimum in a particular process. So this is what assessors generally check in the broader terms. So whatever clause they are checking, they check with this intention of
Thank you. Thank you. So I think we do have a question from the audience. Uh, what key recommendations would you provide for successful completing the medical laboratory accreditation process under ISO 15189? Uh, and what are the primary tasks that laboratories should have done? Can you repeat your question? What sure. is the, uh, what laboratory should uh, handle? May I repeat it again, sir? Ah, uh, sure. Key, uh, what key recommendations would you provide for successfully completing the medical laboratory accreditation process under ISO one five one eight nine? And what are the primary tasks that laboratory should prioritize? Okay, the very important. See. First thing is, they have to decide. They want to go for accreditation. Then second thing is, they have to conduct some training. They have to build up the understanding of this 15189 among their staff members. Then different roles and responsibilities shall be defined for everyone. Okay, this particular person uh, is lab director. A lab director has these responsibilities and authority and he has the ultimate responsibility of overall operation. He is responsible for everything. But that doesn't mean he himself or herself has to carry out all the activity. Lab director can delegate these responsibilities to other person also, which should be well documented. Yeah, you want to ask something? Okay, which is well documented so that there is no uh, confusion and they are also designating one person as quality manager who is looking after the development of quality management system. This person is coordinating with various persons in the laboratory for the development of various procedures and formats for the record and also coordinating how this shall be filled and ensuring these documents are prepared and implemented in a required manner. So the key things which a laboratory should handle, one thing is personnel. Personnel should be competent. Competence means ability to use acquired knowledge and skill in practical situations. We shall have demonstrated competence you are doing competence laboratories, carrying out competence assessment also. People are participating regularly in different conference seminars, etc. And these persons, they are authorized to carry out some activity. Environmental conditions are well maintained, well monitored, and this is recorded also. They, whatever equipment they are purchasing, those are of reasonable quality. They are serving the purpose of the laboratory. These equipments are well calibrated and their calibration certificate should be in place. Reagents are of, are of appropriate quality. When they are receiving from the vendor, they are checking. It is meeting all the requirements and before using that for patient, they are checking. With the previous reagent, the results are not significantly different and they are Evaluating, they have evaluation criteria, selection criteria for all vendors. Whether these vendors are providing some reagents or equa external quality assurance scheme, or it is a referral laboratory or calibration activity. Everything is well monitored, well planned. They are their pre examination, examination, post examination processes are in control. Whenever there is any non-conformance, something which is not as per their documented procedure, they are identifying that laboratory information system is maintained in such a way, confidentiality and integrity of the data is maintained. Whenever there is any complaint or feedback, appropriate action is taken on that. Regularly, they are conducting internal audit of their various activities in all the departments. Wherever there is some non-conformance, appropriate action is taken on that and they monitor their action for a period to see the effectiveness of that action and every, periodically, periodicity is decided by the laboratory. They discuss 
with the top management how a laboratory is working. Management may also have some concern how a laboratory is operating. 70% clinical decisions are based on our reports. And laboratory also expect some support from the management. Maybe purchase of some more equipment, maybe some more personnel, maybe some more space. So this is how laboratory shall handle the system to develop this quality in the laboratory. Thank you. Well, so that uh, comprehensive uh, in detail discussion. I think we person who raised that question got the real uh, clear understanding. So we do have one more question. In your experience, how does accreditation impact the overall performance and reputation of the medical lab? See, this accreditation is very important. And laboratory shall take this accreditation very seriously. What I mean to say, sometimes we think we have to implement this 15189, otherwise assessors will come and they will raise some non conformance So we have to avoid that non conformance Think, okay, that intention is okay. But we have to understand we are implementing this ISO 15189 to upgrade the quality of our laboratory. And this is important because our reputation is reflected in a very good manner if our laboratory is accredited. Sometimes what happens, it may be some regulatory requirement. Like in India, what we observed during this COVID time, only those private hospital, private medical college, private laboratories were allowed to perform RT-PCR which were accredited. So it was regulatory requirement. Now India has started a project to develop the reference interval. In this, only those medical college laboratories are included in the project which are accredited. And in many countries, now they are thinking in research projects, only that data shall be accepted which is generated in the accredited laboratory. Accredited laboratory. These accredited laboratories, these are seen as reputed laboratories. I am not saying laboratory which are not accredited, they are not maintaining quality. What I am trying to say, accredited laboratory, they have demonstrated competence. They can show their certificate. They have demonstrated competence. So, uh, and uh, the, all this medical laboratory accreditation, 15189, were first released in 2005. In 2003, an accreditation was started in 2005 and since then it has progressed significantly and the years to come, we will find this accreditation compulsory in many areas. So it is better laboratory, medical laboratory think seriously about this accreditation and otherwise as a human being also, we have to see we are contributing in the better patient care. So there shall not be any compromised from our laboratory side. Uh, because if there is some error, we are performing tests only once. If there is some error, so it will affect the decision, the therapeutic decision on the patient. So this is very something which is very serious. Thank you. Just yes, one more question I have. Uh, yeah. To be a assessor, is there any qualification or any uh, specific uh, requirement to be an assessor in the accreditation uh, setup? Hmm. See, every country, they have their own accreditation body. Or some accreditation body, they are providing accreditation in multiple countries. To be the assessor, in India, what happens, they say, person shall have qualification related to authorized signature. Whatever government has laid down, in India there is MBBS, after that MD. So if one wants to be assessor, previously they were making assessors who were non-MD also, but now requirement is person should be MD in pathology, microbiology or biochemistry. These are the three main disciplines of medical laboratory. 
they shall have this qualification, only then they can be assessed. So it is decided by the accreditation body. In some countries, they may be accepting some other persons also. But what I'm saying, that is related to India. Okay, sir. So, any more questions from the audience? In the great platform, you can share your ideas and ask questions from the valuable platform. We don't have any questions in the chat, though. So, so. Thank you very much, sir, for spending your valuable time with us and sharing your experience, uh, expertise and your experiences with us. It means a lot to us, and we are truly blessed to have a resource person like you in our midst today. Uh, Thank you. So with that, uh,